What's going on you guys and welcome back to the ARA show. So we all know it's a good idea to diversify our overall portfolios. So we're not just solely into stocks or crypto, but we're also into these alternative asset classes. Some of these alternative asset classes can be things like real estate, commodities, private equity, and so on. But the problem with these alternative asset classes is it's really hard to get into them. The barrier of entry is really high because not that much people have that type of money to join real estate, for example. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys three alternative asset classes that anyone can join with a relatively low amount of money compared to getting into things like real estate. So if you guys want to see all of that, stay tuned and cue that intro. So the first alternative asset class that we're going to be talking about is in the NFT space. So the NFT space is still relatively new and there's a lot of improvement that could be made and it's still not perfect. But in this example, we're going to be talking about NBA Top Shot because this is one NFT space product that I use. And honestly, it's been really fun and profitable at the same time. So like I said before, the NFT space is huge and there's a lot of ways that you can make money and also lose money in that space. For example, you can get into digital art and all the other types of different trading cards that are all online on the blockchain now. So that's just some of the potential in the NFT market. But again, we're just going to be talking about NBA Top Shot. So I did a video before talking about what NFTs are. So if you guys want to see that, I'll leave a link all the way in the top right over here so you guys can check that out. And it's just basically going over what are the basics of an NFT and also Top Shot in general. So we're not going to go too much into detail here. I'm just going to be showing you guys some of the potential that is relatively there and available in NBA Top Shot. So the way NBA Top Shot relatively works is there are these things called moments. So if I click on one over here, it's going to be Isaiah Hartenstein. And you can see it's going to be a highlight play. So this highlight play is out of 12,000 available and each one has their own unique number. So you can buy it or you can get them in packs and you can, as a collector, you can hold them forever and pass them down to future generations, or you can try to make a quick buck and sell them, or you can even try to invest into them. And that's a really cool thing about NB Top Shot is there's tons of potential to either make money, invest in the long term, or just kind of have fun with it. So that's kind of the way that it works. For a new investor, I really like it because there are these things called packs. So you can buy a pack when they're available. For example, right now there's a new collector pack, so you can reserve that and I believe it will be $9. In this pack, there's going to be three moments and hopefully you'll be able to hit big. So again, there's no guarantee that the moments inside this pack are going to be super profitable. But for the most part, the lowest that I've seen in a pack is about three, four dollars as of currently today. So there is a lot of room to make back your money, which is a cool thing. But also keep note that when you buy and sell, there is going to be a fee. When you buy, there isn't a fee. But when you put money into the NBA Top Shot website, there is a small service fee as well as when you sell, there's a 5% market fee. So again, you have to be really strategic with how you play this. If you want to make a quick buck, it's probably going to be a little bit harder versus if you try to invest for the long term. And I'll give you guys an example of what I have inside of my collection. So a lot of you guys know that I have my own podcast, by the way, check it out, Push the Tempo Podcast, I'll leave a link in the description, and also the East Coast Broadcast. So you guys know I'm super into the NBA, and that's why I have a lot of fun collecting, but also at the same time, it's been a little bit profitable. So it really depends on how you are. If you're just trying to make a quick buck, you can have fun as well. So I've got a bunch of moments, and we'll kind of go into how much money I've made later on. But I'm just going to kind of scroll through so you guys can see. These are the ones I'm trying to sell right now. Uh, I bought some of these at $3 and try to quick flip them for about $4, $5. So that would be, you know, uh, $3.80. So about $0.80 cents per card. So again, that's with the fee. So it's just a quick look and insight into my collection. And as you guys can see, it's super basic, straightforward. And I would honestly recommend this for an NBA fan. Personally, as an NBA fan, I've had so much fun with this platform. I've had a lot of fun with the community. And that's probably one of the biggest pros in this space. Is it's really fun to communicate and chill with everyone and kind of just see how they're investing or what moments they're buying. So I'll probably do a bigger video in the future on this whole NBA Top Shot thing where I go into more details about the pros and cons. But anyways, let's take a look at my profile. So I'm under Young Game Changer if you guys want to give me free moments. 
Now nah, I'm just playing. But uh, anyways, you can see my total moment value is about 1200 and my lifetime profit is $589. And of course, I put in a little bit of money just to kind of test it out. And I was kind of surprised with all the amount of profit I was able to make. I kind of just invested into my favorite cards and then just sold them. Or I bought a bunch of packs whenever they would drop and then just flipped whatever was inside of them. So I was lucky enough to get this much of a profit for something relatively brand new. I've seen guys turn 3k into 27 million and I'll kind of show you guys that later in the video. It's just kind of insane. But overall, it's been really fun and I really do like this alternative asset class. So this is just one example of the NFT market. But you can see that there's tons of potential in this space, especially to make a quick buck or two. So I would definitely recommend this NFT market as an alternative asset class. So again, I'm just going to kind of go through here just to kind of show you guys what this platform looks like. This is a different website called Moment Rakes. And again, I'll leave a link in the description for all the websites that I've used just so you guys can get a better look at it. But this one kind of tracks what and how your, I guess you can call it your portfolio or your collection is worth and what it looks like. So these are just some of the moments. Um, it tells me how much I bought it for and how much the profit is. So you can see I've got this Chris Middleton for forty dollars, and now it's currently worth fifty dollars. So that's about a ten dollar increase, not including fees. So that's just kind of how it works, and honestly, it's pretty cool. So that's the NFT market or the NFT space. So that's the first alternative asset class. Let's hop into the next one. Before we hop into the next alternative asset class, I forgot to put this in, so I'm just gonna edit this in real quick. So this was what I was talking about. It's very clear and apparent, and it's very transparent. You can see what everyone's portfolio is worth, or their collection, whatever you wanna call it. So we've got this guy, Whale Vault, over here, and he was the guy I was talking about. So his total purchase price was about $3,298, and then he has an insane ROI of 839%, 839,000%, and then his total valuation is about 27.7 million. So he quickly flipped 3K, into about 27 million which is insane and you can kind of go down the list of course he's a top collector so this is not going to be the case for everyone and i will admit that this platform is still really brand new i remember at one point i had been down quite a lot of money i was kind of an early adopter and that's probably why my lifetime profit is pretty good so just recently the market seemed to rebound so you do have to do a little bit of research before you hop in and kind of understand how the economics of this whole platform works before you hop into this asset class so with that being said let's just hop right into the next one all right so this next alternative asset class is something that i've talked about on my channel before and again i'll leave a link right up here if you guys want to check out the full video where i go into more details about the sneaker market and the collectible market so kind of the sneak peek was already there but this alternative asset class is the collectible and the sneaker market so this is something that i've been doing for maybe three four years before i even started investing actually and honestly it's been a quick way to get some money it's not necessarily that hard but at the same time it's not that easy to get every single release to be honest i just like to buy it on the sneakers app or if there's some type of raffles or just on foot sites such as you know champ sports or finish line or something like that and then if i'm able to get it i'm getting it if not then i just leave it. i don't go too crazy about it but it is what it is you can also find some plugs or whatever it is but you have to make sure that your sneakers are legit so there are some pros and cons when it comes to sneaker investing like i said before totally check out that video i'll leave a link over here where i go into more detail so i really like this platform because it's easy to buy and sell you can also see your own portfolio but this sneaker asset class is probably one of my favorite ones just because although it's not like nba top shot where everything is transparent and on the blockchain and it is a little bit more difficult but it is a way to make some money pretty fast for example top shot you could just get packs and sell them it's kind of the same thing with sneakers of course the price to get them is a little bit higher. It's not like that $9 pack or $14 pack. You have to get these sneakers at retail to be able to get the best amount of profit. Or you can also invest into them. For example, Jordan ones typically go up in price. So this one right over here is about $203. In my opinion, it will probably appreciate to maybe 300 or maybe even 400 if we're lucky in a year or so. So that's the hopeful thing with sneaker investing is the prices for some sneaker models usually go up. You have to do a little bit more research to find out which ones are good and which ones don't really appreciate. I'll just tell you guys some of the really good ones are some Yeezys, the 350 V2 model, the Jordan 1s, and Dunks. Those are usually the best ones for appreciating prices. So with that being said, let's hop into my portfolio to kind of show you guys how my collection is looking like. 
All right, so you can see the A ratio and this is your portfolio. So you can see I've got about 20 items uh, with a market value of about $6,714 with a gain loss of, of a gain of $3,669. So honestly, that's pretty good. That's about half of my market value is coming just from gains. And that's what the cool thing about sneaker investing is if you're able to get a shoe at retail price, a lot of times it goes up almost double the price of what you paid for. It, of course, it does depend on the model and you guys have to do your own research and hopefully I'll do more videos on sneaker investing in the future. But this is one of the easier asset classes that doesn't really require a lot of money. So you may be looking at it like, yo, this value right here is huge. But honestly, I started my collection off with a $200 pair and I ended up selling that for $380. Or after that, I took that $180 profit and just kept reinvesting it and building my collection as it goes. So you guys can kind of see some of my collection over here. This isn't my full collection because honestly, I've been kind of lazy in putting some of my sneakers that I just recently got. But you can see these are the dates that I got them. And then these are the current prices. So I was able to get some of these sneakers for a good price. For example, I got this one at $201 and it's currently worth $271. And with this platform, StockX, you do have to pay a fee when you buy and sell. But if you sell locally, you don't have to pay those fees. So you can avoid those fees. And then honestly, it's just a great way to make connections. And hopefully they have some sneakers you like. But yeah, that's kind of the whole thing with sneaker investing. You just have to find your niche and kind of just learn more about sneaker investing. At first, I wasn't that great at investing into sneakers. As you buy more and sell more, you eventually find out which ones end up making more money than other ones. And then again, guys, it's not that hard. I would download the sneakers app if you're a really new and beginning investor into this asset class. And then just follow some Instagram pages that talk about sneakers and see which ones will make you money, which ones won't. And kind of just buy, try to buy the ones that will make you money. And then hopefully you'll be able to acquire them. And from there, just sell and make a profit. All right. Before we hop into the next alternative asset class, let me give you guys an example. So this is a sneaker that I bought last year from Sneakers App at the retail price of $100. It's a Nike Dunk Low Syracuse colorway. So it's right over here. I ended up getting it through the sneakers app at the retail price of $100. And this was one of the coolest ones because I thought it was pretty ugly. But, you know, all the sneaker pages would say it was going to be maybe a $200, $300 profit. So I ended up picking it up and I saw that it was about $243, meaning I would get about $140 profit. So I was like, you know what, might as well just hold it. And then right around maybe November, January time, I ended up selling it for $508. Around, around here, I'll, I'll give you like a rough estimate. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. So anyways, I got like a decent profit, maybe like a $400 profit from the sneaker. And you know, $100 to $508, you can't really complain about that. But as time went on, this sneaker model in general and this colorway actually increased. And now it's worth like the last sale was $855. That's a huge increase. And again, this is not going to happen for every single sneaker and every single model. But it's definitely worth looking into this asset class, especially if you're able to acquire some of these decent pairs. And then just kind of hold them and sell them and see what happens. Like I said before, it's definitely something that you have to learn the basics of before you kind of hop into. And that's why I really recommend checking out that video I made. Again, you don't have to check out my video. You can check out any video. It's just good to know it before you jump into the sneaker investing world. So with that being said, highly recommend this one as well. This is something that I found success for myself as well. I kind of like to think of it as like a second job just because I have fun collecting sneakers and then just selling them for a profit. So with that being said, let's hop into the next one. All right, so the last alternative asset class is inside of the real estate sector or industry, and that has to do with the platform Fundrise. So the platform Fundrise, from my opinion at least, is a pretty good way to make some money and enter the real estate market without investing too much money or getting too much involved into it. From a lot of people I've heard, this is a great platform, and from a lot of people I heard, it's kind of okay or not really the best. But either way, it is pretty convenient. The way it really works is you put your money in and then it gets crowdsourced with other people's money and you own a portfolio of a bunch of different diversified real estate properties. So that's really the basics of how it works. You can kind of see this is a pitch over here. And again, guys, this isn't something that I do personally. So I'll definitely watch more videos to kind of learn more about it before you hop into it. Or at least know that this isn't financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. So if you guys... Please don't zoom me or anything like that, you feel me? But, you know, all jokes aside, I definitely think this is a cool platform. Uh, leave a comment down below what you guys think about this platform. Again, this is just their pitch. Let's hop into investments to kind of see how it works. 
So the lowest amount you can pay for is $1,000. So you do need more money as compared to sneaker investing and inside of the NFT market for NBA Top Shot. What they do for you is they get like a bunch of different properties and put inside a portfolio. You can get dividend reinvestment plus auto invest. So you can do it every single week, kind of like a dividend portfolio. You can get dividends, which is really cool. And then you can also get capital appreciation from these properties. Uh, you can create goals. Uh, there are fees with this. So I've heard that the fees are kind of annoying. But again, you get three months of advisory fees. And hopefully you can make back your fees with the capital appreciation and with the dividends. Then the second one over here that I can do is a minimum of $5,000. And it's kind of like the same thing. I'm just going to kind of go through these. These are advanced for $10,000 and the premium for $100,000. So again, this one is a little bit more costly than the NBA Top Shot one and the sneaker investing. But from what I've heard, this really works out pretty well. Um, they have a really good homepage where you can kind of understand a little bit more about real estate and things like that. But either way, I definitely think this is something worth looking into if you want to diversify your overall portfolio. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to learn more about this. But either way, guys, that's been pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below. What are your top three alternative asset classes? And out of these ones, what are your favorite? And if, are you going to invest into any of these or you just kind of kind of think about it? So let me know down in the comments down below. And guys, I appreciate you guys for watching my videos. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, especially if you got any value. It really does mean a lot to me. And guys, remember, everybody eats.